Hello everybody, this is Intrepid83, and welcome back to Let's Play EVE Online. Alright, so, uh, this recording session, if you will, or this day, I will, well, you get it, you get the idea. Um, this is a starting a new session of recording. Uh, I'm starting out special because today is a very special day. Uh, first of all, as you can see, I'm sitting down here nice and comfy, I'm sitting in a ship, I've got a bunch of, uh, uh, destinations to go to and stop off and all that fun stuff, and, uh... What is this you might be wondering? Well, you might have guessed already, is that I officially am sitting in my Arbitrator. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen it yet? Well, that's why I'm sitting here, so I can uh, see it. So you guys can see it when I walk out there. But first of all, I would like to give a huge thanks out to uh, Yonatu51 again. Uh, yeah, so he contacted me in EVE Online asking me, you know, hey man, you know, I want to help you out. So, uh, yeah, so he uh, asked me how much I needed. I said, you know what, I can't ask you for the money, but if you insist. So I just basically gave him a quick calculation of what I would need. And he ended up uh, donating 15 million ISK, and I promised him I would send him back the, the excess of the stuff that I did not use of that money. So I have done that, and this is everything I bought. So, uh, yeah, the prices, I believe, that I, u that I used were... Right here. I only needed one more large shield extender, so yeah, that's what that's what that price only encompasses. So this is what everything costs. So, all right. So let's go see what this arbitrator is all about. You can see a little hologram of it there, but let's uh, get out of. Hey, cool. Let's get off the uh, couch here. There we go. Cool. And let's walk out to the ship. There we go. <laughs> And all those stops you might be guessing are the all the components of this thing. So here it is, the Arbitrator. But a long time in coming, and it would have been even longer if it wasn't Yonatu, it wasn't for Yonatu's 51's uh, generosity. So uh, there we go, and his charity. So there we go, there's the Arbitrator. Full size. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, so I've got to go pick up all this, all the uh, pieces of equipment. Um, yeah, so it's basically all scattered throughout, uh, you know, Amar, a couple of stations there, Panergman, uh, Tevidu, and uh, Tashmarkan Prime, which is where actually where I have the uh, the rigs going on right now. So it's yeah, I've got about an hour and a half or so until they're done. So uh, I may not, if depending on uh, how quickly that I can get to the other places or not, you know, I'm, this might be done by the time we get to Tashmer Khan, but if it's not, well, I'll come back and I'll, uh, uh, I guess I'll, uh, if they aren't done by the time I get there, then I will meet you in Baijeba after I've plugged them in kind of thing. So uh, you can see what the final result is, and I guess, uh, well, in my time, a couple hours or so, maybe. But anyway, so I'll head out uh, to collect all this stuff, and uh, depending on how long it takes, I'll either meet you in Tashmer Khan or Baijeba. Alright, so obviously, me being in Baijeba, the uh, rigs were not done by the time I got back there, but they are done now, and they are uh, slopped into these this thing here, and we are fully equipped here. <laughs> look at the HP of the shields, look at the recharge time, and uh, the resists will be uh, something we deal with uh, mission-wise. Anyway, so as I said, meet, meet, meet you back at Baijeba. Why? Because we have two level 2 mission agents right here that we can do. So uh, I'm actually thinking about maybe doing two missions at a time kind of thing, but then just split them up kind of thing as I complete them. Uh, unfortunately, that probably will only work when I get two missions that run me up against the... that I would have to fit the exact same tank for. Um, so the beauty about the Arbitrator is the fact of its... the fact that it's, you know... well, I'll show you the bonuses of it. It gives you, uh, well, it does the tracking disruptor bonus, but that really only applies if you're doing PvP. But then it's got 10% bonus to drone hit points, damage, and mining yield per skill level. So basically, this is a drone ship. And as I said, with the addition of the drone damage uh, amplifiers here, it pretty much converted this ship into a pure uh, shield tank, just because of what, you know, there's really no point in fitting any turrets on them, because you don't get any bonuses for them. So, and they just use up caps. So, um... In this case, this thing has a 150 cubic meter drone capacity. In other words, it can fit three sets of medium-sized drones. In this case, they've got Hammerhead 2s, uh, Valkyrie 2s, and Vespa 2s. Now, with these 
uh, drone damage amplifiers, this act, those actually bump the DPS. I think without those, the DPS of the Hammerhead 2s is about 202 damage per second with my skills, which is, I believe, it's almost maxed out. I think I still need to train Galente uh, Drone Specialization 5 to get that maxed out, but 200 damage per second, which is that. But with these two damage, uh, damage amplifiers, it jumps up to nearly 300 damage per second at about 270. So when I go up against uh, Galente Federation, it's going to be fun, because uh, that the one thing is that when you go up against any uh, any uh, I guess races like the Blood Raiders or anything that uses EM thermal, I'm probably going to have to scrap one of these for an extra uh, for the extra um, uh, what is it the uh, shield power relay to give me the uh, the tank to bunch bump my tank over 200 damage per second, which is what I was aiming for with this ship, and uh, put the EM hardener in there to be able to do that. So. Uh, be a bit lower, but generally I think the lowest DPS you'll get out, I'll get out of this ship is 240 damage per second, and that is against the EM thermal NPCs when I have just the one drone damage amplifier in there. So uh, this ship is going to do a lot of damage. But anyways, well not the ship, the drones will be. But and also uh, I think I might have mentioned when I was first discussing the the arbitrator that you. Can, you can actually have it, you know, fit with the drones, but then also have, you know, a couple of tractor beams and a couple of salvagers in there, so you can salvage the mission as you go. If you're doing that on your own, um, I would actually recommend doing that because it, you know, you kill two birds with one stone kind of thing. Uh, but in my case, because I'm recording these episodes, because I'm recording these missions, I want to complete them in a timely manner. In other words, I. I, I'll still be using my Punisher to salvage them, but I'll be using this thing to gather in all the wrecks into one spot. Then I just, you know, bookmark one of them or bookmark the one spot and warp back to it with the Punisher and just sit there and just salvage everything all at once kind of thing. So that's basically what I'll be doing just to be able to cut, keep the uh, salvaging uh, to a minimum kind of thing on screen. So there we go. Now, uh, with regards to the level 1 missions, obviously I have not finished that one mission that uh, I wanted to record, but I will be running level 1 missions as well on the side until I find get it and there's one actually one more storyline mission as well that I'm hoping I'll get as well so if I get that then I'll do that so I guess there's really only two more missions that I would want to record for the level ones before focusing exclusively on level twos but anyways uh, the one thing is also with you when you're running level twos is that especially since I'll be running them most of the time uh, the Storyline missions will be level two level as well for the most part, so I'll probably have to run a, quite a few level ones in order to be able to get that get it. But uh, anyways, uh, so let's speak to the first level two agent mission here, uh, level two agent here. Uh, so the seventh brothel, and so that's going up against mercenaries. And this one is cargo delivery, and this was cargo delivery is actually the mission I was re I'm referring to with the level one. I wanted to show that to you. Uh, but well, I guess we'll get a, uh, a different one. So we got, uh, you know what, I think I'll do this one first. And obviously it's a Blood Raider, so let's accept it. Which means I'll have to fit this thing for to face them. Unfit. Now before they gave us these things, I'd, I'd used to, whenever I face EM Thermal, because the damage output would never really change with the drones, uh, I would swap the shield tank out for an armor tank. That's why I had the uh, the, the armor repairs and all that kind of stuff in the original fitting. But then I remembered that they've got these things, so this thing is very much more beneficial to be a uh, shield tank. So let's take that out. So these drones will be doing about uh, 240 DPS. I'll be using the Hammerhead 2s, and this tank is around 211 damage per second. So that's accepted. Let's go. So I might as well, since this is the one that I wanted to show you in level 1, I'll show you the level 2 version of it and uh, try to explain a couple of things about the level 1 until I can finally get that mission. So let's, uh, I was going to move that, but I will So yeah, basically this thing's going to be doing nothing but just tanking, pretty much. So let's see here, uh, yeah. Oh, it's in another system, is it? Where is it? It's in EBA. Alright, let me just click it there. Awesome. And I've already got them in their, uh, respective, uh, I guess... Uh, I guess you could say uh, groups. There we go. And with the phone ringing in the background, there you probably can't hear it. But uh, yeah, I am kind of expecting a phone call from my parents uh, just because they need some help moving some furniture. So uh, if I interrupt this video, well, that's probably the reason why. So, which means I could end up not getting the bonus for this mission e either. So, uh, what is the uh, so we got 63, so the, uh, the ISK isn't really up there yet, but uh, the loyalty points certainly are. But anyways.
this ship is what made me fall in love with drone ships, and shield tank <laughs> for missions. But this is by far my favorite shield tank of them all. Just because it's so uh, unorthodox. You know, Amar ships tend to be focused on armor, even you know, when you first see the base specs of this thing, it's got more... I think it's got 500 more armor hit points than it does shield hit points, but it ta shield tanks so much better. And not to mention you can have the extra bonus of the, uh, the drone at damage amplifiers, which really makes shield tanking a very viable uh, way to go with this ship. So. Plus I like the look of it. Kind of reminds me of a uh, Starship Enterprise at the front there, but... <laughs> Anyways. Just gonna flip this on. I'm going to need it since this thing has... No. Most ships have zero EM resistance with, his, with their shields. Alright. The other thing that I kind of had to sacrifice when I... Uh, chose this particular setup is the fact that with the armor uh, repairer setup I would have been able to equip a um, an afterburner. Unfortunately that's not the case here so I'm probably going to have to edit this out. I believe when you, once you get it within 10 kilometers that's when you get jumped so I'm just going to edit out this travel time here and uh, I'll be back you know, just before they jump me. <laughs> 